Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Pennsylvania's 5th Congressional District. I am so honored to be here today with EPA Administrator Michael Regan, Governor Tom Wolf, uh, Representative Regina Young, and members of the Eastwick Lower Darby Creek Area Community Advisory Group to celebrate how the recently passed Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act will help our region of southeastern Pennsylvania. When you consider what the infrastructure bill delivers, it's easy to understand why it received bipartisan support in both the House and the Senate. The 2021 infrastructure law provides federal funding to fix our crumbling roads and bridges, address bottlenecks at our ports, make public transit more accessible, replace lead pipes, expand access to broadband, and as you'll hear more about today, it will also tackle pollution that has plagued our community for decades. Thanks to funding from the new infrastructure package, sites like the Clearview landfill here, where we're standing, will see their cleanup projects accelerated. And that is great news for both our environment and the communities surrounding Superfund sites. In addition to the obvious environmental benefits of cleaning up decades of hazardous waste, Completing these projects is also about justice for our neighbors. More than one in four black and Hispanic Americans live within three miles of a Superfund site. 70% of the country's most environmentally contaminated sites, including some here in Pennsylvania, are within one mile of federally assisted housing, according to a report by the nonprofit Shriver Center. In some cases, communities near Superfund sites were built on top of contaminated land because it was cheaper to develop that way. And that's what happened here in Eastwick. And we know all too well what the results have been for the resilient folks who call this neighborhood home. No one should have to worry about this kind of known contamination where they live, work, and play. So I'm delighted to see the progress that has already been made at Clearview Landfill. We just had an amazing tour. And we've seen that they've relocated businesses that once occupied the site. They've removed contaminated soil from city park and residential yards. And they've constructed a cap for the landfill. And it, they're now installing a retention wall. As we and we also appreciate the planting of tens of thousands of trees throughout the site to minimize additional groundwater contamination and improve the environment and the aesthetics of the area. So we want to thank Administrator Regan and the entire Biden administration for prioritizing projects like this one as we begin to roll out funding from the bipartisan infrastructure law. It's a win, win, win. Less pollution, safer communities, and more jobs. Now I'd like to turn it over to Governor Wolf. Thank you. So it is really nice to be here, Administrator Reagan. Thank you for for being here. I appreciate, <clears throat> and I and I told him I really appreciate the invitation. This is such a feel good story uh, that I, I'm really proud to be here. And and then as a bonus, uh, I got to ride with him. We got to exchange uh, driving experiences. I got to say he's the better driver of the Gator than I am. So. But but uh, it was it's it's been really nice to to be here and 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 I really think uh, this is an important announcement for Pennsylvania uh, for everybody. Uh, this is important. As you know, Pennsylvania has in its constitution the guarantee of a clean environment for its citizens, and that means everybody, no exceptions. It's a right guaranteed to all of us. It includes outdoor spaces, includes clean energy sources, uh, public lands public natural resources, and unfortunately, all too often state and federal funding has not been available to actually make us, uh, allow us to make good on the promise uh, that the Constitution actually promises everybody in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. There are 90, that's nine zero Superfund sites in Pennsylvania alone, all of them on EPA's national priority list. These sites are often highly contaminated and they threaten the health of Pennsylvanians and the economic vibrancy of the communities that they reside in. Many Superfund sites like this one, which I now know why they call it Clearview. I mean, it's a beautiful, beautiful view at the top of this. They're located in low-income communities and communities of color, which for far too long have borne a disproportionate share of the harmful, the harmful effects of environmental damage. These harms the harms that these communities have experienced have only been compounded 
by the challenges ac accessing funds to conduct cleanup which communities did not cause and for which they should not have to pay. In October, I signed an executive order to strengthen Pennsylvania's efforts to pursue environmental justice in communities like this. And in times since that, the state has taken steps to advance our renewed commitment to make environmental justice a focus. We obviously have a lot of work to do. But in doing that, we had to acknowledge the long history of policies that have caused lower income, vulnerable communities to unfairly bear the consequences of pollution and to disproportionately play hosts to sites like this one. And we have to work tirelessly to clean up polluted places that are harming and holding back communities in which they are located. The funding that comes from the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act being announced today is going to help us make the promise real for communities all across Pennsylvania. This funding is going to help us clean up more Superfund sites across the state faster. I think this site now is going to be clean by 2023 as a result of the Infrastructure Act dollars now coming in as a result. That's a big deal. 2023. Thank you for the applause. Now, you know I'm term limited, so I'm going to be out of here after this year. So I won't be around when this is finished. Someone else is going to be able to take credit for this. So anyway. <laughs> I can visit. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. But the infusion of funding is going to give Pennsylvania more of the tools we need to build healthier communities, to reduce environmental injustice, and to ensure that our Commonwealth actually lives up to the promise of our Constitution. It's our Constitution. So I appreciate the Biden administration's commitment to this, commitment to environmental justice, to commit the commitment to fairness and equity. This is really important. And I think it's important that we give them all the credit for funding the cleanup at sites like this all across Pennsylvania and all across the nation. This really is important. So thank you. And now, who's next? I get to turn this. Oh, I am. Ted. Okay. Ted. I'm up. Ted, Ted, and, up. Ted, Ted is the community folk, uh, represents folks here. And, and we've had a lot of conversations about this. And how long? You've been here since 1982, right? Right. And, and uh, just to, to think about what he has seen and what this community has seen in terms of the pollution that has surrounded it and, and what this must mean and does mean to everybody living here. So, Ted, take it away. Okay. Thank you, Thank you Governor. Appreciate it. Hello, everyone. <clears throat> Eastwick is a community that has faced many social, economic, and environmental challenges since the 1950s and 60s. We are here today to talk about the Lower Darby Creek Area Superfund site, the Clearview Landfill located here in Eastwick and where I live is a part of the Superfund site and I am happy to report, as the governor said, that the landfill will be completed in 2023. Thank you. Thank you. When I first moved to Eastwick, I moved because my wife grew up in this area. It had many amenities, uh, including good recre recreational facilities, uh, like the new tennis courts a block away from my house. I soon learned, though, that the eyesore across from the tennis courts was a contaminated landfill, and that some of my neighbors had been fighting for years, literally years, to have EPA clean up the site. But their efforts were not yet meeting success. But that all changed in early 2015. Despite our history of distrust, government agencies, and failed, <laughs> supposedly, <dis> mm -hmm. <laughs> and fa <laughs> didn't mean it like that. <laughs> I, I, I did not mean it like that. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> okay. So despite our long history of distrust of government agencies and failed supposedly designs to help the community, Eastwick community leaders and pioneers like Tyrone Beverly, Leo Brundage, Earl Wilson, and others approached EPA in 2015 seeking to work with them to establish a new community advisory group to advocate for the needs of Eastwick residents and our concerns about contamination of the Clearview landfill. Again, concerns going back literally years, decades, in fact. 
The Eastwood community's journey begins well before the site became a Superfund site in 2001. Throughout the 50s and 60s, the Redevelopment Authority of Philadelphia displaced over 8,600 people from their homes and in the process dismantled one of Philadelphia's only racially integrated communities at that time. A long history of flooding, toxic dumping, and heavy industry has made Eastwick an environmentally vulnerable neighborhood. The LDCA Superfund site, Superfund site is just one of several environmental challenges our community has faced and continues to face. Residents of Eastwick are resilient. We're smart. We know how to fight for ourselves and our future. Some of the words you use today to describe communities like Eastwick include overburdened communities, environmental justice communities, fence line communities. But we call ourselves a proud, resilient, smart, committed, and determined community, determined to fight for our own future and determined to fight smartly. In our case, we had assistance with an equally committed and smart federal aid partner the U.S. Environmental Agency, the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, excuse me. Once we decided to work with the EPA, community leaders and ordinary citizens quickly focused their efforts on understanding the Superfund process and the specific needs and requirements for cleanup of the landfill site. Any member of the community who wanted to serve on the newly formed community advisory group was allowed to do so. No one was excluded. The goal was to repair past community fractures and to fully engage Eastwick residents in the Superfund cleanup process. Active and broad-based community involvement made a huge difference in the community effectiveness in working with EPA. Many residents got involved and stayed involved in what the EPA was doing in the community. We worked hard to make this project a success and also make this project work for the entire community. Hard work on the part of residents and sincere long-term commitment by EPA to listen, learn, and meet the community's needs has made our project a success. Residents of Eastwick are resilient, smart. We know how to fight for our future. Wow, sorry. Our residents endured long hours of weekly and monthly meetings over several years, and we kept asking EPA difficult questions about how the cleanup would meet our needs. Slowly, the community and EPA began building stronger and more effective working relationships, one that is proudly on display here today. We learned through our work with EPA and the Superfund program that we finally had people who knew how to listen and help us achieve what we needed and wanted for our community. But we did it within the framework of the Superfund program. Our partnership with EPA enabled Eastwood residents to move beyond the all too easy trap of anger and the frustration of finding yourself living in a contaminated community. And we began moving forward to find solutions that would work for us as a community. EPA's project manager, Josh Barber, was invaluable to the success of this project. He helped residents see the future when we could not imagine it. That vision included what our community would look like when the landfill was cleaned up and how the project would unfold step by step. Now it all seems so clear, but in the beginning, nothing was very clear we took a collective leap of faith. Where are we today and where are we headed? Eastwick still faces many environmental challenges, including climate change and challenges like flooding. But our community is stronger today and more focused and committed to our future than ever before. We have regained the confidence we need to continue to improve the quality of life on a variety of fronts as we continue to face environmental changes. As we stand here today, Eastwick is a clear demonstration of what a proud and resilient community can achieve when it is committed to standing up for itself 
and engaging in honest communication and coordination with EPA to see the Superfund process succeed in this community. The Clearview landfill, again, as I said, will be clean, cleaned up in 2023. Our property values have never been higher. We no longer fear that our health is negatively impacted by concerns about contamination from the landfill. Our social fabric is stronger. In addition, and importantly, we have established a strong, positive, long-lasting relationship with the U.S. EPA. They have our back. We know this. We believe this. And we have made strong, lifelong friendships with EPA site team that will last long after the landfill in our community is cleaned up. We appreciate you coming to our community and being with us here to celebrate our success. Thank you so much. Well, thank you, Ted. And listen, I want to thank you for your steadfast leadership. And I want to thank you for adding to the description of this community. Uh, we do talk about our communities as environmental justice communities and disproportionately impacted. But Ted accurately described the community as proud and resilient and tough. And that's exactly what we're finding today. So thank you, Ted, for your leadership. Governor Wolf, thank you for your leadership and partnership with EPA. I'm sure that if you weren't term limited, the, the good people here would give you another shot. <laughs> Congresswoman Scanlon, it's a pleasure to be in your district. And I'm sure if you continue to deliver billions of dollars, you've got a bright future here. <laughs> I'd also like to acknowledge uh, my exceptional EPA colleagues who are with us today. Carlton Waterhouse, Deputy Assistant Administrator. Adam Ortiz, Regional Administrator for Region 3, as well as Josh Barber. Angela Ethier, Gina Socha, who, who have worked so tirelessly to strengthen EPA's relationship with the community and to bring us to this moment. We're standing here today at the Clearview Landfill, which is located within a 100-year floodplain and next to the Eastwick neighborhood of Philadelphia, an underserved community that has a long-standing history of flooding, displacement, hazardous waste dumping by industry, and, as Ted delicately said, failed government interventions. <laughs> you know, residents could have retreated in the face of these issues, but they knew that they deserved better from their government. and. Not only did they know that, they demanded better. Their vision of a healthier and safer future led to the creation of a community advisory group for the lower Darby Creek area, which has been transformational in getting to where we are today. I'm proud that this community advisory group received EPA's 2021 Citizen Excellence in Community Involvement Award. <laughs> for playing such a vital role in EPA's cleanup of the Clearview landfill. Thanks to a strong partnership with the community, EPA has removed and replaced 26,000 tons of contaminated soil from 195 residential properties in the Eastwick, Eastwick community, remediated over 10 acres of city park open space, capped and restored 12 acres of Clearview landfill, and stabilized nearly half a mile of stream bank with natural features. But the work is far from being complete. This community's resilience, determination, and collaborative approach got us to this point. You are a shiny example of what government and communities can achieve when we all work hand in hand. In the United States of America, no community should have to live in the shadows of contaminated waste sites. And yet, as stated earlier, more than one in four black and Hispanic Americans live within three miles of a Superfund site. Folks, that's unacceptable. And that's why I'm so proud to announce today that thanks to the leadership of President Biden and our congressional partners, EPA will invest $1 billion of bipartisan infrastructure law funds to initiate the cleanup and clear a backlog of 49 previously unfunded Superfund sites all across this country. <laughs> 
And as with this project, the funding will help accelerate the cleanup of dozens of sites as well. The bipartisan infrastructure law invests a historic $3.5 billion overall in the Superfund remedial program to supercharge EPA's ability to address legacy pollution in communities across the country. With this funding, communities living near many of these most serious uncontrolled or abandoned releases of contamination will finally get the protection they deserve. This is the first wave of projects that will help deliver lasting public health protections in communities that need them the most. Approximately 60% of the 49 sites that will receive funding are in underserved communities. I think that's important. 60% of the 49 sites in this country will receive funding are in underserved communities. This funding will clear the backlog of cleanup projects that has been growing since 2015, with some of these projects waiting for more than four years for funding. These cleanup projects will make a visible and lasting difference in our communities, plagued by decades of pollution. In one Florida community, residents have been advocating for the removal of creosote contaminated soil in their neighborhood for years. They won't have to wait any longer. At one New York site, lead will be removed from soil in people's backyards. At a site in New Mexico, EPA will address the source of area contaminated groundwater plume migrating towards the community. Clearing the backlog is just the beginning. Funding from the bipartisan infrastructure law will also be used to accelerate ongoing work at dozens of sites across the country, including this one right here. This is a proud day for EPA. It's a proud day for the Lower Darby Creek community, and it's a day filled with hope for communities that have suffered for far too long. This administration and this agency are committed to taking decisive action to protecting people's health. And that's exactly what we're doing here today and exactly why we are following the president's lead for building a better America. Thank you all. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is, good afternoon. Right. It's good to see you all. My name is Adam Ortiz. I'm the regional administrator completing my sixth week on the job and I couldn't think of a better way to celebrate and it is a beautiful day in EPA Region 3, is it not? It is. So we're going to open up to questions in just a minute, but before we do, I want to extend some of the acknowledgments. Um, as we say in Region 3, we, were, we are on the field doing the work that we're supposed to do as EPA and we are in the field engaging with the folks who matter most, the folks in the community. I want to um, acknowledge Paul Leonard, who's our division director, and he oversees the Superfund fight, uh, Superfund fight, and the Superfund program, <laughs> and the Superfund site. <laughs> uh, and some of the names have been mentioned, but not to put a finer point on it, I want to acknowledge Josh, who, as you can tell, has no shortage of enthusiasm for the work that he does. Thank you. You're a rock star, Josh. We appreciate you. Lots of rock stars. Charlie, I want to acknowledge you. Angie, want to acknowledge you. Uh, Katie uh, and um, Chad is here uh, working with the press. So thank you, all the members of Region 3, for everything that you do day in and day out. I also want to acknowledge the contractors, the folks who are working every day. We got dirty boots today, but they have dirty boots every day. So thank you, Environmental Restoration and Tetra Tech and everybody else you're working with to get the job done here on the ground. We appreciate you and the workforce that you're developing. And then finally, and most importantly, um, I just have to extend my deep gratitude to Margie and Ted and everybody in the local community here. You have leaned in, you have given us honest feedback, we have listened, and we are working together. We have some solutions, but you have more. And it doesn't matter if it's big things or small things, we are always here to listen and partner with you to restore and return uh, the environment um, back to Mother Nature and then back to you to enjoy.